Hey, what's up guys? My name is Odolf and welcome to another one of my hit film tutorials. So for this tutorial, we're gonna do this effect right here. And as you guys can see, like this effect has been done, like variations of this effect with After Effects, like this videos all over YouTube. So I decided to have a go at it using hit film and that's what I came up with. So as always, for every tutorial, you might not want to do this specific effect. But like watching the tutorial, you'll probably learn something that you could use for future projects. For example, you learn about lights and how to make 3D boxes. Like if you want to make a 3D box, so that will be great. So anyway, so let's get started. First, let's make a new composite shot. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to make the 3D box. As you can see, like the text is like in a room and then the camera is panning through it. So we need to make that box and we're going to make that box using layers. So we're pretty much going to need to make five different layers and then we're going to put them together in the shape of a box. So if you know how to do that, you can skip a little bit forward to when we get to the good part. But if you'd like to watch how to do the box, then don't skip and keep watching. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get a new plane. And yeah, let me make the color red. So let me put that as a 3D plane first. Then we're going to see we can get different views. Now let me get two views. So the active camera and the top view. So as you can see right here, once I select this, that's how it looks like. Like from the top view and that's how it looks like in the active camera view. So pretty much what we're going to want to do is get some other layers and put it on the side, one on that side because ultimately we're making a box. So let me select our camera and let me move it back a little bit so you guys can see it better. So that's what the camera is seeing and that this is our back wall. So let me go and rename it and rename it back wall. So let's go ahead and get another plane. This one I'm gonna make it green. It doesn't really matter what color you make them but so you can differentiate between the different walls I'm gonna make them different colors so for the green one where is it at that's it right here let's make it a 3d plane also and as you can see it is right on top of the red plane which is not what we want because we want it to be on the side coming down here so let's go to controls transform and we're gonna rotate it to the y-axis by 90 degrees and now as you can see in the top view right here, it's not it's now going sideways. So now all I have to do, let's zoom in to be precise, is move it down to the edge right here. And then move that forward. Now since we're only going to be filming from the inside of the plane, uh, on the box, it doesn't really matter if the outside is precise or not. So for that we can get away with just getting it close enough. So very much that's the idea right here and we're gonna need to get to make different walls for each side. And then now let's get another plane again. Make it a 3D plane. And we're gonna wanna make this as the bottom wall. Well, as the floor, not the bottom wall. So, so yeah, let's go ahead and we're gonna rotate this one 90 degrees to the X axis. So as you can see, it's laying flat now. From the top view, you can see it's laying flat. And then let's scale it up to the y-axis. See, I unlink this, so only the y-axis scales up. So it can pretty much fill, fill everything. So let me move this. So now you can see it's covering everything. And then let me just go ahead and let me switch to to front view so I can be more precise with it and then let me just scroll it to the bottom but let me stay in front view so then yeah let's call this one rename floor and then let's just duplicate this one control D and move it up and let's rename this top wall or ceiling if you speak English correctly. <laughs> so, so yeah, so pretty much that's how it looks like right here. That is our box. And if I go to the top view and I move the camera, as you can see, I can move in out of this box. 
Now, why did I make everything different color? It's spread mode, so you guys don't get confused because if I put everything the same color, you you wouldn't really see the separation. So we just we're gonna take these off for in a second. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is get a light. As you could see in the example, we have some different lights going on, and the light really is what's gonna be giving it a lot of depth and making it look cool like we want it. So let's just go to a new layer and light. So now the light happens. Let me, yeah, I'll stay here right now. So yeah, the light happens and you pretty much don't see anything. And let me name, name this blue light. Yeah, so the light happens and you pretty much don't see anything because it's currently a spotlight and spotlights are pretty bad with lighting up rooms. So let's go to layer properties. We select the blue light, let's go to layer properties. And that's where we can change the type of light that it is. And right now it's a spotlight. And we're gonna want it as a point. And pretty much the point is pretty much emitting light all around it. And that's what we're gonna want for this. So as you can see, it's, that's the back wall. Like if I select the back wall, that's where it is. And that's where the light is also. And that's why this back wall is not being lit because the light is behind it. So if I go to the light right here and move this in the middle, then you can see it. But again, right here, you're not seeing it because it's over this top layer. So let me move it down. And there, that's where we get it right here. So after we do this, we're just gonna wanna make all the lights the same color. Again, if you're doing this, you wouldn't need to really make them different colors to begin with that's just something i decided to do so let's go to color exposure let's see if that works yeah so let's do this so we're gonna be making all of them white so let me copy this and like just paste it on every wall so as you can see it right here. So now we have our blue light, which is not blue at the moment. So we're gonna, let's put that down and we're gonna go to light. And that's where you can see what color you make it. And right now it's like a yellow tint and we don't want the yellow tint, we want a blue tint. So let's pick a pretty blue right here. And you can see the room right now. And I, like you said, like I saw you guys, like if I move it around, like it's actually moving throughout the room and, and interacting with the walls and everything, which is pretty cool. So again, to add even more depth, we're going to want to change the fall off. Pretty much the fall off is pretty much the distance between the darkness part, dark parts of the light and then the bright part, is, if that makes sense. So pretty much right here, everything is bright because there is no fall off. But if I put it to linear fall off or something like this, as you can see, the light happens and then it fades away, kinda. So it's not like the light is not like everywhere as it as it is right here. So let's put it to curve fall off, and it does look like a lot cooler, gives a lot more depth and dimension to the room. And you have the reach. The reach is pretty much see this circle right here. That's pretty much how far the light is going. So if the reach is very small then it's not really affecting all the walls because the light can reach it. So let me just scale the, yeah, that, 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 that looks about right. And yeah, let me put it more to this side. So that's how you see the light right here. So, so another thing I did in my example, because to add some Again, to add some depth to the walls is, for example, you see the wall right here and it's all smooth like that wouldn't really look like a, a regular wall. So let me go to the back wall, go to generate, and where is cloud? Clouds. So we're going to be using the cloud tool to pretty much add some like different shapes and just add some bumps to the wall pretty much. Let's open these up and let's change the speed to zero so the shapes don't move at all. And we're just going to mess with the frequency and the iterations and everything so we can get like some textures going on in there.
so we don't want them too small and we don't want them too big so about right here is good yeah so about right here is is perfect for the wall but of course that is too too in your face so we're gonna need to s s I forgot my words so anyway we're just gonna need to make it less obvious so let's go to offset and play with it a little bit maybe we could use even more so hopefully you guys can see that right here if I delete that it's all smooth and then right here it just kind of as a little depth to the wall so let me go ahead and copy Control C copy this and just paste it to all the other walls and now we have the room right here so again I did that kind of quick so we can mess with the cloud tool when you're doing this to get the particular look we want but for right now I just wanted to show that you can add some textures to the wall using this and again, one thing, one other thing I did, for example, at the separation right here, everything is so sharp, like the corners are all sharp and everything, which you wouldn't really want in an actual wall because nothing is that sharp in real life. So if you're going for that look, what I just did was add a grade layer, put it on top of put the grade layer on top of everything, and then I pretty much just blurred it out a little bit just a tiny bit not much like that five pixels right now so am I doing this right yeah so maybe yeah just at one pixel so it just makes it not as sharp like the edges of the walls and everything so it just makes it not as sharp so so yeah and let's go ahead and add another light again you see it shows up like this and let's rename this red light make sure it's under the grade layer and then again let's go to layer properties put it as a point and light instead of that yellow color let's put a red and again let's go to fall off curve fall off and the intensity let's not put the intensity as high and let's get this down let's switch back to top view move this a little forward so that's how it will you will see it right here so right now it's a legitimate 3d room with 3d lights interacting in it which is pretty cool so and again if I zoom out and then I move the camera back and forth you can see I'm actually going in and then going out and the next thing I, I did was add a new text. Make sure the text is 3D. And then go to the text tool. Let me put just one view for this. Go to the text tool and row the pole. Oh. Row. Let's go to Alright, I don't know why my O is not working, so whatever. Hey, well, seems I'm having some keyboard difficulties here. Anyways, see, so I had the text is right here. Let's make this bigger. And you can see it like this. So if I go to top view, that's the text and let's move it forward so we can move it forward backward let's put it about in the middle right here all right so we have the text right here and you see that the text is black even if it's supposed to be white and that is just because of it's being illuminated and since the light aren't bright enough they're not really bright enough to show that this let these letters right here are actually white so if I go to the new text right here 
and go to material and now check illuminated that means this text in particular will not be affected by the lights and let me go and click cast shadow so this text can cast a shadow because of the light and right now you don't really see anything and that's because if I go to the blue light right here I didn't check cast shadow so if I check cast shadow let me go to the red light and do that also and let me make sure these are set right yes all of them receive shadow so if I move the text around depends on where I move it you can see that the shadows are being interacted with it and again this is a legitimate 3d room so like the shadows are reflecting wherever I move them that's where they'll go so it's acting as if it would be in an actual room so yeah we can see it right here it looks pretty cool and of course the last thing I did was pretty much added some movement to the camera which can be done pretty simply so if I move this back a little bit maybe I'll add it at an angle go to transform rotate it a little bit and then I will just make sure that I keyframe everything and then move on to maybe like three seconds and then so I will just need to add add it where I would want it next and then let me rotate it again so yeah and pretty much as I would go and then the things would just come in right here so the tutorial is running pretty long for now so I'm gonna stop it about right here so that's pretty much most of the effect you can experiment and get all the looks you want and as you can see the example I did the lights were flickering and I just pretty much added the gray the filter that had the flicker effect so it could affect everything so yeah that's it right here so thanks for watching this tutorial and hope you have fun knowing this effect and i hope it helps you do other effects and remember i'm on facebook and twitter so if you do these things be sure to follow me on there you'll get some cool updates and it's just fun to do this cool people follow me on facebook so go ahead and do it so again thanks again for watching this tutorial and be sure to subscribe if you want more tutorials and check out my website readypolice.com for presets and project files and a bunch of cool stuff and should our stuff back comes out next week so look forward to that again thanks again and have a nice day